I wonder if the C in the name means the letter rating of this kit. Let's find out at the end of the video. How's it going guys? It is Plastic Disaster. Now obviously I was kind of joking and maybe a little serious for the Type-C part. Well, in universe, I'm not sure if it really stands for anything, but think of it like this. Take like an old GM from the first Gundam series as an old iPhone model and take the Type-C as a brand new iPhone model. It may not be the best comparison, but at least you guys know what I mean. Now this grunt mobile suit came from one of my favorite Gundam OVAs, Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory. Now, I want to go in depth on what the anime is about, but just go watch the anime. It's only like 12 or 13 episodes. It's in one of my top 5 favorites. So looking at the box art, we have the GM Type C ready for battle. It's got the big bazooka, it's got the shield, and in the background we got the dumb tropin, the GP02, we got the Type C again, and way farther in the back is the Power GM. Not much to show on this side of the box, but we do have hand options, stickers, the weapon layout, and the articulation. Moving on to this side of the box, we have the front and rear shot of the kit. We have the information about the mobile suit, but it's in Japanese, and we have the familiar CG render. Cracking open inside the box, we are greeted with three bags of runners and a manual. Looking at the cover of the manual, here's the kit all put together and painted. No, but inside the manual, we have more information about this mobile suit and the weapons. This side, we have a familiar CG render. And moving on down is an advertisement of other 0083 kits. Checking the parts list, looks like we're going to have some leftover polycaps and some leftover parts. Looking at the back of the manual, we have the action and rear shot. Of course, there are familiar pictures. Moving on down just shows off the details and where to place the marking stickers. And moving further down is a color guide if we're planning on painting it. So starting off with runner A is going to be a multicolored runner. We got the dark blue, we got the clear green, the red, and the yellow. Runner B1 and B2 turns out to be one giant render, but it was broken in half. But these are going to be the light tan parts. Runner C is going to be the dark gray parts for the weapons. Runner D is going to be the dark gray parts, and those are for the joints like the elbow bands, and the knee bands, and the waist part. Runner HGMP-1E is going to be the hand parts. Old school polycap runner, by the way, this kit came out in 2010, so let's see how well this ages. And a tiny marking sticker. Now this is going to be an interesting build because I did not see a color correcting sticker, or the foil stickers you want to call it that, which means it's a good sign. Now the thing I'm really curious about is the color separation and the engineering. I'm going to put this kit together right now. I'll see you guys after that. And here is the Type C put together. And I gotta say, the engineering, it's actually not bad. There are some parts that does show its age. And there is not a lot of details. You do get the seam lines. I mean, it's what you expect from an old kit. And by the time of this video's release, it's already 12 years old. Now, it may seem like I'm being harsh to it, but on the good side of things, on the looks department, it's actually pretty good. And maybe put a little effort in it and it'll look better. For seam lines, lucky for you, there is not much. Now starting off with the head, usually there is a seam line right there, but it could go as a detail. For the shoulders, there is a hidden one until you see this little bit right here. On a torso, this part and this part is a seam line, but it could go as a detail. And the not so good ones would be the front of the arms and the back of the arms. On the back of the legs, the top part could go as a detail, but you do have a seam line on the lower part of the leg. Okay, now here's the funny part. Now, looking at the ankle armor on this foot, uh, this one's a little uneven, while on this one it looks pretty decent. Maybe I just had a weird copy. If you guys are having this issue as well, let me know in the comments below. And of course, you do get seam lines on the weapons, it's just two parts sandwiched together. As for sticker placement, well, you don't get a foil sticker sheet, but you do get a marking sticker sheet. And just a heads up, that is not blood. If you guys see the anime, it's actually paintball. Now, the numbers, the EFSF logo, and the little logos right there, they can be placed on the kit wherever they want. Now, I'm going to talk about the important ones. 
like this yellow sticker goes onto the crotch piece. But if you guys paint looking for you, it's a molded detail. And another one to talk about is this big Federation logo goes onto the shield. Okay, so that about wraps up the out of box presentation. Now I am going to work on this kit and speaking of that, I want to talk about the hand objects. Now you might be saying, whoa, it's a little too early for that. Well, yeah, it is. Now, take a look at the kit. You see how the hand colors is actually correct, but you do have other hand options, spoiler alert. And now take a look at this. This is the incorrect color. For those who paint, it's not a big deal, but for those who just want to keep an out of box presentation, yeah, it might be a bit off. And now I am going to work on this kit and I'll see you guys right after. And here is a GM Type-C after I put some minimal effort in and I even took a step further by giving it some weathering. I try to go a little bit light on the weathering because less is more. But other than that, uh, it doesn't take a lot of work just to make this kit look good if you're planning on detail painting it. Alright, so moving on with accessories, starting off with hand options. This one, you have the weapon holding hand only for the right side and you have an open palm hand. Well, actually, it's more like a rifle support hand and I know it's on a ball joint, but it's also on a hinge. Next up, you have this trigger figure hand and I already put the bullpup machine gun on it. For some weird reason, on my copy, the finger part, it pops off too easily, but if you guys are having this issue, let me know in the comments below. Two open palm hands, and yes, I know the color is a bit darker. I mean, that's the closest thing I could find. Two closed fists. Next, you have its shield, and you also have this adapter piece. Now, instead of like plugging the shield onto the bay, you can slide it out, and you can have it hold it on the underside of the arm. And you have two holes on the back of the arm, so you can plug it on either arm. And finally, the bazooka, worst accessory. Okay, so you might be asking, why do I hate the accessory? Well, before I get into that, of course, I already put the trigger figure hand and the handle does move forward and, okay, that's what I mean when it pops off too easily. Anyways, the handle moves front ever so slightly and back ever so slightly. And in theory, it should help you hold the bazooka. Now, you might be saying, well, what's wrong with it? It looks perfectly fine. Well, that's because off camera, I was doing like a lot of fumbling and it won't hold the bazooka properly. And the issue with the trigger finger hand I have is not doing me any justice. Now for those who have a sharp eye, you may notice that that bazooka is the same bazooka as the Gundam Mark II Revive version. If you want the type C to hold the bazooka, I recommend borrowing from the Gundam Mark II Revive version. It's longer, it has better engineering, and the kit can hold the bazooka properly. So, into the spare parts bin you go. And the final accessory is the beam saber handle with no beam saber effect parts. But if you guys have a spare, you can bind it to this kit. Moving on with articulation, the head is on a ball joint and the neck can move forward and back. The shoulder is on a peg which allows the arm to rotate and the arm can swing forward. The arm can go up this far, a little less than 90 degrees. Bicep swivel, double bend on the elbow, and of course the wrist is on a ball joint. You don't get any ab crunch or any backward crunch or any side to side, but you do have a waist swivel. Front skirt can move up this far, side skirt can move out this much, and the back skirt is in a fixed position. The thigh is on a ball joint, so you can go up this far, can move back this far, and as for the splits, well, not a lot. You don't get a thigh swivel, but at least you can simulate one. Technically, the leg is on a double joint, but it's bending just slightly over 90. Moving down on the ankle, it is on a ball joint, and the ankle armor can move up and down. The feet can go forward this much and move back this far, and yes, you do have the famous GM flip-flop joint. As for the backpack, well, you don't get any articulation. Overall, the articulation is not bad. I mean... You're not gonna do any dynamic or any kung fu poses, but as long as it could do like a simple basic pose, I can let it slide. Size comparisons, here it is right next to the standard size RX-72, and as you can see, they're both the same height. Here it is right next to the enemy mobile suit and from the same anime, the Zaku 2 F2. And man, I gotta say they look good together. And just a heads up, I don't have the GPO-1 or the GPO-2, so uh, yeah. Finally, here it is right next to Godzilla and Optimus Prime, so that's about it for the size comparisons. Let's move on to my final thoughts. Moving on to my final thoughts. Now, in the name Type-C, does this kit really get a C? 
Well, to answer your question, yeah, I give it a C. Now, usually a C means it's above average, right? Which means it's not terrible. I only recommend this kit if you're okay with it. Because for me, I know it's an old kit, I know what I'm getting myself into, and I know there are some builders out there who are willing to modify this kit, and if you really want to do it, I say go for it. I think it's a perfect kit to do some experiments on. And if you're a lazy modeler who wants to do like minimal effort, I say that one's also good for you. And if you're the kind of person who prefers like sick or dynamic poses, you might want to turn the other way. All right, so that's about it for the review. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys are new, want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Questions, concerns, comment down below. Leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys see what I mean? It's a lot better now.